Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near you, your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you, to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. I want to welcome you to his story with my co-host Lisa Varga. We have an extraordinary guest with us today, uh, especially uh, extraordinary for my wife. It's something my wife has followed for a long time, so my wife is going to be in incredibly excited about this guest and got a chance to meet uh, Kim. So I'm going to turn it over to Lisa Varga and introduce our great guest today. Thank you, Pastor David, and yes, we are so excited. Today on the show, we have Kim Alexis. Kim is a supermodel, she's an actress, she's a host, she's an author, she's a mom, she's everything, and to me, I think she's superwoman. So uh, we are gonna talk with Kim about her journey, her career, and so many other really great things, and uh, we're just, we're thrilled to have her here. So welcome, Kim, to the show. Well, thank you. What an introduction. <laughs> well, that's, but that's what you've done. I mean, it's, it's quite impressive, the career that you've had, and uh, what I love most is that your your faith, and uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more too. So um, it's so yeah. great to have you here. And as Pastor David was saying, his wife Christine, she and I, we had this whole conversation about you, mm -hmm. and uh, both of us really looked up to you uh, because myself, I, I was in modeling when I was younger, and uh, also Christine, you know, she's was very much into modeling and fashion. And we just started to talk about how wonderful you are, not only like this career that you had, but what a beautiful human being you are, too. So we are just we're, we're thrilled to have you here. Oh, thank you. God has done a lot of work in me from the days of when I started, probably 42 years ago in the modeling business. Wow. And you look stunning, by the yes. way. You are beautiful, but you're beautiful from the inside out, which is the best thing of all. So that's where you got to start. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, let's really start by telling us. So obviously, we know you were a supermodel and <laughs> we'll just start with that. But how did you even get involved in that? Let's go back to uh, the story of how it all began, because you have a very interesting background of how you even fell into this. Yes, and I did fall into it. So I was in high school in my senior year. I was already accepted into college for pharmacy at University of Rhode Island. I was a swimmer. I used to swim five and a half hours a day. I was also working in a drugstore for $1.98 an hour, trying to get some um, background and just be useful. Um, I was in the band, so I played concert and um, uh, marching band, which my sons are horrified when they hear that. Like, oh, <laughs> what, you did you, what did you play? I was a, I played clarinet. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
they're like, mom, you were a nerd. I'm like, so? <laughs> um, so in my senior year, here I am already in, ready to go to college. And um, I thought, okay, how can I make money? So people had said, oh, you're pretty. You know, you look like so-and-so. And I'm like, who? Because I was a tomboy. I was too busy swimming and doing all the other things I was doing. So um, I enrolled in Buffalo into a modeling school and because you had to go through a school first before you could start making money. And I just always felt like a fish out of water. Half the time my hair was wet. Uh, (laughs) The other girls were all decked out and prepared and had like their portfolios and all these lingerie pieces that I still don't own. And, um, and their pictures and the whole bit. And um, I was just I just didn't feel like I belonged there. I was kind of just tolerating, like, what am I doing here? So one night, this this little man, he was very short, and he was kept staring at me from the class. And so um, I didn't, you know, it was kind of disconcerting, but the owner of the agency called me into her office. Well, way back in 1978, when you're doing a uh, modeling school. It was how you walked, like with that book on your head. I don't know mm-hmm. if you remember that, the charm yeah. school and yeah. how to open a door properly, how to sit down, how to. So here I am trying to do all those things while I get called into the owner's office thinking she's kicking me out because I don't belong here. <laughs> and instead, this little man's in the office and um, his name was Ron Kineski. And she said, how would you like to go to New York and be a model? And I said, no, thanks. I'm going to be a pharmacist. Wow. <laughs> so it took a long time. And I finally said, literally, I remember the words, take your stupid pictures, you know, because they wanted to send them to New York. So they took these pictures of me um, where I didn't know what I was doing and they were in black and white. I still have them. They're hysterical. Oh, I'd love to see those. <laughs> I know. I'll show you. Okay. And um, And so ended up getting the eyes of John Casablancas and he came to Buffalo to uh, more or less meet with me. And so he met me at the charm school, modeling school I was at. So here I am up with the head of an international modeling agency and he's chosen me. And he asked me to look around the rest of the room to see who else could possibly model. I'm like, I don't know. They're pretty like, so it was a turnaround here. I was thinking I was getting kicked out and now I'm the one chosen by this international guy, John Casablancas and offered a contract. He offered me a contract for a year to work because he knew that number one, that was what it took to get me out of college. And number two, that he knew that he'd make his money back. So wow. off I went right after I turned 18, my birthday's in the summer. And so um, in July, I went off to New York and got a haircut and got a picture taken. And then I jumped in two days on a plane to Rome and Paris. And I did the collections for Italian Bazaar. And we were up working 24 hours a day. When you do the Hoka tour and all the designers have their clothes, you get them when you get, the magazine gets them when they get them. And then you have to have models on call. So it was 24 hours a day in the middle of Rome and, and Paris. And so um, I had a, a magazine cover for them in four days. Wow. And that was wow. the start of my magazine <laughs> covers that I've done over the years. That is amazing. I mean, to get a magazine cover, like right off the bat, like that, in that short amount of time um, is pretty impressive. And you have gone on to do, I think, don't you hold the record for most magazine covers? Yeah, I think some of the girls would argue, but if we really sat down and counted all of them, yeah. <laughs> Not including social media modeling covers or anything like legit magazine covers when magazines were a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And now the celebrities have taken over. The models can't get a cover. You know what? You're right. Yeah. But you did. So you did magazine covers. You did Sports Illustrated swimsuit. Um, what were some of your favorite jobs or some of the most memorable jobs that you had? Well, I love the Sports Illustrated. I got to go to places. My first trip was to Kenya, Africa, and just the animals and the the vastness of the continent. And uh, it, was, it had its own heartbeat. You could really feel like the earth had a heartbeat. So you were really in nature there and got to see so many more shooting stars at night. And uh, it wasn't marred by our urban life here. And so it yeah. was just, it was just different. Um, I love that. I love just working for French Vogue or going to uh, Paris for the month of April. Normally I used to go and just hang out. What so an amazing done, career. Yeah. Fashion 
some of the fashion runway shows were always very memorable. So I grew up with Ralph Lauren, Calvin Klein, Tommy Hilfiger. They're all like buddies because we all kind of got in the business together. So when I see them, they're like, hi, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> they're these big icons that are larger than life. And people just look on you like, ah, it's just them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's great. Do you stay friends with any of the other models, uh, you know, that you worked with at that time? Because you, I mean, you were a huge name um, in the 80s. And well, what, what, when do you think you peaked? What years were they? <laughs> I mean, you still are going now, strong. Baby. And it's, That's it's, right. I'm peaking now. Um, no, I, it was probably, yeah, 1980. I got a um, contract with, I'm um, sorry, can't even talk. I got a contract with Revlon, I think in 83, 84. Okay, because I remember, and you and I had talked about this, I was in high school, um, it was like my junior, senior year, and we did those programs where, hey, you can get out of school if you go get a job at the mall. I'm like, sign me up. So I worked at Zales. And my friend and I, she worked there too. And we both were aspiring models in this small little town. And there was your picture, you know, just in all of their jewelry. And you were just so beautiful. So every day I would literally go into this jewelry store for my job. And we would just like, look at your photo and go, she's so pretty. And, <laughs> you know, and now here I am talking to you and you're still so beautiful, but it's so um, ironic that, you know, you were one of the, the supermodels that I looked up to. And I remember flipping through through the magazines and there you were. And back in the day, I think, I don't know if kids still read magazines, but that was like a huge deal, like to look through magazines and all the fashion and, and the makeup, that was a big part of every, every girl's life. I mean, it probably still is. To some yeah. Extent. Except for me. Cause I didn't really understand. I mean, I remember, so when you do um, covers and then when you do things for like Vogue and stuff, they have the top makeup people. And I literally started with the Italian Bazaar. So I had some of the top makeup people. He actually, the guy I first worked with the very first day just died. So he's so sad. Joey Mills was a really wonderful um, uh, makeup artist. And he was there my first day when I was like, what do I do? <laughs> so one of the first things he said to me was, don't let them pluck all your eyebrows out, sweetie, you know, keep your <laughs> eyebrows. So um, it was just kind of interesting to have the best of the best makeup and hair. And then you'd, we'd start doing catalog work to fill in. And that's where the money was. You got a lot more money doing catalogs, but you had to do your own hair and makeup. And so one time I remember I was looking over and I was watching a, a girl who had, she was a brunette and I didn't have a lot of makeup. So she's like, here, use this, use this. Well, I was trying to follow what she did and I was putting on the, the eyes and the makeup and the lips and stuff. She looked beautiful. I looked like a clown and I didn't realize it's because I was blonde. Blondes need different makeup colors than someone who's a brunette. Wow. So um, I just had to learn very slowly just to be put in these situations and I look around. I was always looking around and watching and keeping my mouth shut and just observing because I was really thrown into this business, not having a clue what to do. Yeah. And it's a tough business, isn't it? And there's a lot of pressure. Um, tell me your experience of what it was like living in that whole environment and being in that, you know, having that kind of career. One of the things I think that is the biggest difference between someone who goes to work nine to five is that they always go to the same office. They can park in the same place. They can take the same route to work. You're not going to get lost for me every day being self-employed. It was a new adventure. How do I find this address? Who's going to be there? What kind of personalities are there? What room is it in? How do you get there on the elevator? And it, just little shortcuts. And what are you having for lunch? So everything was always new. We were always in a different situation. It wasn't something where you could be comfortable um, having a security of certain things that you that you kind of take for uh, take for granted. I think when you're working nine to five somewhere. Yeah. Well, and then you also got into um, broadcasting. So I know you and I had talked about that, and I love this story. So let's talk about. I, you know, I have great stories. Yeah. So as I got a little bit more into it, I wasn't interested in just my face. I wanted to be able to speak and I didn't quite know that I had a voice, but I knew I wanted to do something more. So I hired William Morris back in the day 
Um, I was discussing working with them in possible broadcast, literary, you know, all these different divisions that they had. And so I don't even think I'd signed the contract with them yet, but uh, they asked me, they said, there's a job interview. Why don't you go up to talk to ABC? So I go up to this office and I'm talking to this woman and it's for Good Morning America. And so we're just discussing anything. I mean, it wasn't really anything about the job. I didn't really understand what the job was and um, just going in by trust. And she says, so would you like the job? And I said, doing what? And she says, fashion editor for Good Morning America. I said, I'll give it a try. And she said, good, you're live on the air tomorrow at 743. And I'm like, wait, what? what? (laughs) (laughs) Wow. Surprise. Hit the ground running again. And uh, just remember, Charlie Gibson was back then the the host and um, Joan London was on baby maternity leave. And so it was um, just to watch him be so comfortable. And I'm like, he's just like, he's in his living room and this is live TV. That light is on. And he was just really (laughs) relaxed and kind of, and I was amazed because I was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Too many things coming at you. Yeah, well, and for because you didn't have any training at this point, they just kind of threw you into it, and like the next day you're on air, live on air. Yes, <laughs> uh, same with commercials. When I first did commercials, I didn't have training, and yeah. I remember they kept saying "cut," and you've you've got the spotlight on you. I was doing something for beauty, so you you've got the right here. You've got a, a reflector, and you've got reflectors here, and you're in this small little kind of cocoon with the pretty light, and. Um, that everyone is dark behind you and they're all talking. I'm like, who is that talking? They're like, why don't you have her try this? And I'm like, what am I doing wrong? (laughs) Because I wasn't getting it. They were like, try more conversational. I'm like, how do you be conversational? I'm like in the middle of nowhere, you know, with the lights. It just took a long time to um, get, get what they were talking about. Yeah. Well, it's very different. Here you are a model and you're in front of a camera taking pictures. It's night and day from being in a studio and having lights and hitting marks and action and countdowns and teleprompters. Um, So the fact that you could do both just shows your skills and your talent. I mean, you literally, you can do everything. Um, And then you also wrote books. So now, and you're an author too. So tell us about those. Um, I started writing, I had Random House actually come to me years ago. So I wrote, um, a book with them and Thomas Nelson. So, um, it was, I did, I knew that I wasn't a a great writer, wasn't what my, my skill was. So I had a ghost writer and wanted to make sure that people knew. So I credit in my books, I always credit, you know, with this person because I don't want them thinking it was my writing. (laughs) <laughs> I just wanted them to have credit. Yeah. And so um, I wrote on the business fictional. I wrote a couple of fictional books on, cause I love mysteries mm-hmm. of the whodunits. Ah. And so I wanted the background to be modeling. So I did a couple of those and then they wanted to do a kind of an autobiography on me. So it's called a model for a better future. And that was with Thomas Nelson. Mm. And then after years of working, I started writing eBooks and figuring out how to write eBooks. So I wrote five of those, one on how to be discovered and the emotional kind of thought process behind what I went through that I thought some young girls would want to know more than just fact. And so um, I wrote that. And then I wrote some on health and fitness because that's where my passion is. So one was covered at all. (laughs) Well, yeah. One was on dieting. It was just my um, experience in dieting. And I remember I got a review from someone. He's like, you didn't answer the question of what's the right diet. And I'm like, well, that's part of it is that each person responds differently or at one time or another is taking something away or adding something to your diet can be important, but not forever. So it was just kind of interesting how people expect you to have all the answers and I know what works for me, but I don't know if I know what works for you. That's well, and that's so true, but it's you just sharing that information because if somebody tries that, it might work for them, or maybe they'll pick one or two things from that and that could work. And, but it it is trial and error, anything with health and wellness and fitness, um, we are all so different. So it's great to read all these different books and opinions from people and see what worked for everyone. Cause you do have to pick and choose what works. I kind of get mad at some because they're 
I don't drink soda, but they'll say, all I did was give up soda and I lost 25 pounds. I'm like, well, good for you. Gee, <laughs> that certainly doesn't work for me. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> it is tough. Um, what kind of advice would you give younger models uh, that want to get into the business? Um, you know, just some, maybe that book that you wrote even, like what were some of the things that you had said or what kind of advice can you give the young girls? The biggest um, takeaway I could give to young girls is to always have something else to fall back on. You cannot go into the modeling business desperate and no matter what, you're going to make this work. Number one, that's not how life works. That's not how God wants us to work. Um, I, I think that some of these young girls feel they have to do whatever it takes. And in the business with the type of people that are around in that business, and I'm sure other businesses, but they take advantage of young girls yeah. and get them to do things that um, young girls should not give up. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 So when you walk in there, I mean, I always knew I started the modeling world thinking it was going to be one year of my life. And so I always knew I had my education to fall back on. I had great parents um, and I'd given my college notice, hey, give me a year off and let me figure this out. And then I was signed up for the next year. So for me, I had something else to fall back on. And I set healthy boundaries without even knowing that I was a boundary setter. Like, mm -hmm. nope, I'm not crossing that line. I'm not doing that. You're not speaking to me that way. I'm not going to be in this room this way. And um, there were times when you're 18, 19, 20 years old and you're in a room and everyone's in the art creative mode and you're on set and they're like, okay, take your top off. And I'm like, no. And they're like, yes, it'll be beautiful. What a picture. It will just blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. no. And a couple of times they'd kick me off set and I'd have to leave the building and I'm a people pleaser. I don't want to make people angry. So, um, for me, it was a hard thing to literally walk out of a, of a bookie, but. Good for you that you stood your ground because yeah. so many young girls do not, um, right. you know, I'm proud of you for doing that. <laughs> <laughs> and I hope anyone listening, just say no, if you don't feel comfortable with something, you don't have to, and you walked out with your integrity and um, that's very important. And another thing would be that um, years later, you could have kids in the ramifications of what your children see. Uh -huh. So when my uh -huh. middle son went to college, he was playing lacrosse in Maryland. And the first day of the parent going to the college and the whole bit. So I'm there um, with his dad and Bobby walks out of the locker room. He's like, mom, he says, I am so glad that you never did nude pictures. They're all Googling you in the locker room. And he says, I was ready to punch any guy out that was going to say anything about oh you. Oh my gosh. So who locker. knew? I mean, back, think back in 1978, 1980, all those when we were young, who knew there'd be Google? Who knew we would have little devices where you could look up anything and see anything from the mm -hmm. past? Yeah. Good for you. You kept it clean. <laughs> I wasn't perfect. I was definitely not perfect. But, well, um, that's a perfect segue into, let's talk about your faith journey in your life. So tell us from the very beginning, like had, did, have you always had faith? Have, what was your upbringing? Um, I, I know that's I what guess, got you through. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I grew up in a Presbyterian church in a little town outside of Buffalo. My mom would take my sister and I, my dad is or was a chemical engineer and he at some point claimed atheism. So he was not going to church with us, but my mother would take us. So I went pretty much weekly. And as I hit high school, I was in the youth group. So we used to make five and a half tons of peanut brittle to support a, a trip for us to all to go to some place and um, just kind of hang out together. And so during that time, I had great a great pastor. Um, and I was actually chosen to be an elder of my church at the age of 17 to bring a young voice and a young perspective to the meetings. Wow. And so I, um, I thought it was fine. I thought that, you know, I've been to church, I do my thing. And it was, I thought by works yeah. that I was saved. And so years later, so that was 17 years later, when I'm like 29, 30 years old, um, I'm separated from my husband, my first husband, and 
um, looking for a nanny because I was in New York City and also had a place in Florida. So I needed a nanny. I put an ad in the paper and um, a young girl came to answer the ad. Like I called her back. And so she comes and she says, hi, my name is Anne. And God told me I'm supposed to work for you. My bags are packed and they're in the trunk. And I thought, wait, what? Like, what do you mean God speaks to you? He wrote the Bible and that was it. <laughs> you know, um, but I was so intrigued. And so she was fine in the interview. And I thought, okay, well, I guess if God said she's supposed to work for me. So she was this wonderful, um, very free spirit, born again, Christian, who, when we lived in New York City, I took her with me. I had two young sons at the time. Jamie was five and Bobby was like two. And so uh, we'd go to New York City and she's pushing the stroller and she'd go right up to the bums on the street and say, hey, Jesus loves you. Praise the Lord. And I'm like, shh, shh, what are you doing? Like, shh, you can't do that in New York City. She's like, why not? He's a, God made him. He's a human being. And I was like, oh, my gosh, what is wrong with me? So slowly she would play Christian music in my apartment. And I'm like, ah, my ears. I was like, it was like nails on a chalkboard. I'm like, what is going on? I grew up in a blah, blah, blah. I was an elder of my church. I should be fine. Why am I getting so upset about this? And I saw that the, the joy and the peace that she had. Finally, I said, whatever it is you have, I have to have it. Uh -huh. And so she led me to the Lord with the, the just more or less turning my life over to him. And um, no big clouds broke, no double rainbows, no, <laughs> no nothing. It was, um, and, and I literally started going to church. We went to uh, Times Square Church with David Wilkerson. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't remember like, it being a very fast conk on the head, everything changed, but it was a very slow process. And every time there was an altar call, I'm like, when they'd ask, are you sure that you're sure that if you die, you're going to heaven? I'm like, I don't know, maybe 80%, but not a hundred. So I would run up to the altar and <laughs> yeah. Yeah. saved all over again. So I did that time after time, after time again. And um, <laughs> it, it just took a while before I realized that uh, he was changing me. Wow. That's an amazing story. You know, God can use anyone, a nanny. I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's unbelievable what he does in our lives and the timing is always perfect. Yes. You know, and, and I think we had talked to Ron who yes. you had a huge impact in his life with his faith as well that he credits. So, to you. Yes. And I started dating him and I would drag him to the altar. He'd well, he'd see me go. He's like, wait, if you don't think you're saved, then I don't think I'm saved. So he'd run up there with me. <laughs> yeah. Which is amazing. And all your kids, are they, uh, do they have faith and believe? They do. Yep. My right. oldest went to, a. Uh, um, ministry school for a year and then he dropped out. Um, wow. So he learned a lot, I'm sure in that year. So there you go. He, he did learn a lot. Yeah. Wow. Um, my first ex-husband is a minister. Wow. He ah. became a minister after, um, and actually baptized Ron and then all of our sons in the ocean oh. one father's day. Oh, so my two ex-husbands spend father's day together. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> That's they call themselves husbands-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> that's so great. I think that's great when everybody can get along. Why not? Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh my. It's sad God. that I have to have two ex-husbands, but that's just the way it is. You know, that is the way it is. Nobody's perfect, right? We've all, you know, it, that's no judgment here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what a beautiful story. And so what does life look like for you now? What are you doing now? Well, now since the um, pandemic and probably the last year, um, I've been helping out a friend of ours, the best man in our wedding. Um, and my husband and I work side by side in a lab that does the testing for COVID. They also do toxicology and blood work, but um, there's been a lot of the COVID. And I started out just helping and volunteering because when you're in a position like of me, of my history, people don't expect you to do normal common jobs, which is very strange. It's kind of a sad thing to not be able to contribute. So to be able to, during a pandemic, help out um, is what I started doing. And then they started giving me more and more responsibility. So I now run the whole shipping department in this big company. 
Wow. And I ship the kits out across country to our different facilities around the country that test with us. And I handle drivers and I dispatch drivers and talk with the couriers um, about making sure the pickups are done every day. And then my wow. husband and I both keep track of all the supplies and he orders all the different plates and pipettes and things that are needed to run all the machines for the COVID. Good for you. You are <laughs> definitely contributing. I mean, this is, that's amazing. And how different, you know, to have, here's your, what's your hours? Like you're like a nine to five. <laughs> uh, we're probably eight to five. And so my okay. husband just went in now because, um, well, we're three hours probably behind you, but, uh, yeah. He went in to cover the early shift and I will stay for the late shift. There's a lot of calls that will come in later in the afternoon where they need a pickup. Wow. So. You're like, sorry, I can't go right now. I have to talk about Jesus. <laughs> I got more <laughs> important things to do here. <laughs> well, I have two drivers uh, that work for us and they're young boys that are just wonderful. And we have God talks That's definitely. Cool. And I'll share scripture and, and stuff. So yeah, they, they love it. And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty neat. That's so great. Um, do you ever want to get back into anything with broadcasting or have a show or, you know, get, get back into that kind of business, any desire to do that? Because I think you would be fantastic. You need your own show. You need your own platform. You have a lot to say and uh, you're just, you're so beautiful on the inside and out of course. Um, but what does that look like for the future? Is that something that you'd be interested ever in doing again? Yes, it's it's something I'm interested in. I was discussing a TV show before the pandemic and it kind of came to a screeching halt. Um, I've, I've got a lot of, um, I guess, topics or passions, different passions from making my own kombucha tea to... Uh, Ooh. You know, running marathons or whatever it is, or being a mother and juggling my career. So over the years, um, I think there's a lot of things that I really enjoy doing. So that's been my hardest part of who am I as far as what's my message. And, um, but it'll come in God's timing, the right place. But yes, definitely TV ministry. Um, I was a Bible leader, Bible study leader for BSF for a while. And mm -hmm. uh, then I had my own at church with a bunch of women on a, a Monday night. And so, um, and that kind of had to stop also, which was hard because I'm like working so much. I couldn't give the amount of time that I needed to. And I thought, okay, well, I've got my priorities wrong, Lord. I should be doing the ministry stuff first and then working around it. But yeah. I had peace about it. And I think that's God's answer when you have peace. Mm -hmm. Um, so this is where I'm at right now is just full-time helping out her friend. Got it. I mean, I love anyone in a position where they have a platform, which you do. Everyone knows your name. Everyone knows who you are and you have something very important to say. And it's, you know, the word of God, you're spreading the word. You're, you're talking about Jesus. And right now in this time that we're living in, we need that more than ever. So, you know, I just, I hope and pray somebody out there watching right now is like, Hey, I have a perfect show for her. And yeah. if that happens, how do they get a hold of you? You have a website, right? Yes. I have kimalexis.com. Yeah. Yes. KimAlexis.com. Go there. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like you're going to do something because you, you and I have had some really great talks too. And, you know, between Jesus, your love for the Lord, your faith, uh, your background, the books you've written, your love and your passion for, you know, younger models getting into this business and just helping people with health and wellness. There's so much that you have to share. And I really feel like we need more voices like yours. Well, thank so. you. And I, you and I discussed how it seems everyone's doing our business. So now everyone is a, a poster, has their own Facebook live and yep. you'll see these things pop up and your phone is like, who? There, you know, know, someone has a Facebook live. I'm like, everyone's an expert now and everyone yeah. takes pictures and selfies and everyone's a model. So they've literally bulldoze their way into your and my career. They and do. so it's made it much more difficult. And you and I, when we spoke, we come from a, a more or less a generation where things were more professional and you stayed in your lane. Yeah. So I'm the host and you're the host and someone else does the editing and someone else does the lighting and someone else does the sound. And yeah. um, you just stay in your lane. And these young girls are able to do all of it. Mm -hmm. And they have 
millions of followers. But if you try and put them on an interview like this or have them do interviews, it's that they don't have that depth. Right. It's a whole other world. Very different from when, when we were doing our job and we worked hard. We paid our dues. We went to classes. We studied. We did everything we needed to do to be the best that we could be in our careers and the positions. And then you're right. It's like, here comes, you know, <laughs> these young kids and they have millions of followers and all these things. And I'm like, hey, wait a minute. We're putting out good content here. Where's all my yeah. millions of followers? They don't care. <laughs> yeah. so, I've been more or less told by God too to just, you know, don't try and strive towards getting followers on social media. He more or less said, leave it. And in a day I can give you a million followers. Just trust me in it. Yep. Trust the timing. I love that. So there's so much striving of look at me and this is what I'm doing. And this is who I am. And, and I just, I don't love that. I just have a hard time with that. Yeah. Um, it's got to be a platform. I'm a teacher. So um, mm -hmm. what I want to do is give, um, either encouragement or instruction on what I've learned and what works for me. Yeah. And if they want to run with it, that's fine. If not, that's fine. Love it. Love it. Um, you had mentioned about running marathons, which I'm so impressed because, you know, I'm, I'm in pretty good shape, but I just can't do long distance. I could run a few blocks and I'm done. So <laughs> let's tell us about your marathons and how many you've done. Cause this to me just blows me away. <laughs> well, Yes, I've run eight marathons. Um, the first one I did, I met Fred LeBeau, who ran the New York City Marathon. And um, he asked me to be a spokesperson. And so that first year I was going to do it. And every year in New York, it's the first weekend in November. And I got pregnant. And so I didn't do it. Or I'd done one. That's what I, I'd run one before on a whim. So I had a friend, Hank, who used to run and he flew in and he was doing the Jacksonville marathon. And, um, he, I went with him to the expo the day before and I'm looking around and I got so excited about all the different people. And I'm like, they can run, I can run. <laughs> so I literally was just going to run partial with him and then find him somewhere and just keep them company. Right. Well, I started the race. I ran the whole thing with him. And we finished wow. in four hours and 26 minutes, something like that in 1985 oh and goodness. I got pregnant. And so I didn't do the one New York. And so the, the year after I had Jamie April 1st, my first son and the marathon was November. So I had six months to get ready. Wow. And that was a good goal for me back when I was 25 years old. I just started, I remember I gave birth and 10 days later, I was out running like a lot. That is amazing. All the moms out there are like, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I did a Sports Illustrated swimsuit the week before that. Bikinis. I was, I got back into shape with the first baby. So that's amazing. Well, I mean, you're a natural athlete because you started off as a swimmer, right? So that's how, I mean, you're, it's in your blood to be an athlete. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I, I do love it. And, um, I think that I wanted to prove running a marathon that I was an athlete because I wasn't super skinny and I wanted to justify that it was okay to have muscle and be healthy. And so I ran marathons to really prove that to other people because I always felt like I was disappointing them if they saw me and I wasn't this super skinny person. So this, yeah. this terrible thing in our minds of not being good enough, I've had for a long time. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible that you had that feeling. And it's like, here you are a supermodel <laughs> and, and you had those struggles too. So, but um, again, you know, that's, there's this healthy balance of making sure you're always bettering yourself. Mm -hmm. um, just like as a Christian, you never feel like, huh, I've done it. I have learned everything. I am at the top of my game. No, we are always, Lord, what else do we need to learn? How yeah. else can I learn more about you? Reveal more of yourself and your wisdom to me. Well, the same is true in everything else we do. Yeah, that is <laughs> so true. Yeah, and don't say, oh, I know everything there is to know about a Christian because you'll get your biggest test ever and you, you'll take it back right away. So always be humbled before the Lord and grateful. And <laughs> yes. Um, this is great. So I know pastor David is on a new health kick right now. Maybe Kim can give you some advice. Pastor David, tell us how's your health journey going over there? Well, I really don't start till I get back from Tulsa, but I've, I've done my blood work and, uh, Dr. Sherwood is getting me on a program 
and it's time for me to get myself in shape. And I have no excuses because like Kim, my wife is uh, into health, eating right. Uh, she run marathons as well, works out a couple hours a day. And uh, I think that's why she's had such a bond with Kim uh, yeah. throughout her career. Uh, so I'm a work in progress, both in my walk in Christ and my physical body as well. There you go. So right, what, is your, what is your plan? Are you going to start a fitness regime or a dieting? Like, does, does your wife cook different for you than she does for herself? Yeah, she does. Uh, I'm still trying to eat with some of the stuff she eats. Um, trying to get a, we're, a holistic approach of it. You know, exercise, uh, vitamins, and uh, eating better. Uh, not that I want to try to, you know, be, uh, you know, uh, strong or something like that. Just to have the have the strength to get through the ministry and, and have that energy. So okay. when we get back from Tulsa, it's there's no excuses. <laughs> I'm all in. <laughs> I'm committed. They took yeah, eight vials of blood yesterday, so my whole arm is all black and blue. So oh. they took a lot of blood. But it is a lifestyle, and I I know my mom always she would pile her plate filled with food. And then she'd say, Monday, I start my diet Monday. It was always <laughs> Monday. <laughs> but I'm like, mom, it's something that is just a part of who you are. You have to do it all the time. It's not like you can start, so, you know, so you may have to start gradually and either take things away without feeling like you're being denied or I think that's a big the part of dieting or fitness is a mindset. Right. Yeah. You have to do it because it's good for you and you have to do it because you want to do it and you know it's the better thing for you. Like I'm choosing to eat this kale instead of this cheeseburger because I know that this kale is going to be beneficial down the road. We are going to take a quick break right now, but we will be right back with Kim Alexis and more of his story. extreme terpenes incorporate all the vital components of the industrial hemp plant by sourcing organic ingredients from the flowers, seeds, and stalks of these God-given plants. All of our products meet or exceed the 2018 U.S. Farm Bill requirements. Obey is leading the way in restoring past remedies for essential solutions with clean and simple, natural, organic, healthy choices. Thank you for your support as it helps fund many of the His Glory Ministries Benevolence Projects. Welcome back. You are watching His Story. I'm Lisa Varga, and I am here with my co-host, Pastor David Scarlett, and we are talking with Kim Alexis. Um, and you're right, Kim, it is 100% a lifestyle, and it does get easier. The healthier choices you make and the more that you do, um, you know, finding healthy replacements for something so you don't have to do without, you know, instead of a soda, maybe have a sparkling water. I know it's not the same for soda lovers, but, um, you know, it is. It's a gradual thing. And once it becomes part of your lifestyle, then it's easy. Um, but it's that everything is hard to start off with, you know, whether it's working out or dieting um, or even getting in the word, like new Christians yeah. that are just starting out too. It's like, well, what do I do? Well, you know, start with the Psalms or the Proverbs and start small and then grow and then, and then feed yourself more and more of the word or whatever it is you're doing. Um, Cause you can't just jump into something and expect to have it mastered like within a day, mm -hmm. um, right. except for you, when you ran the marathon, that was pretty impressive. So that, maybe you're an exception to the rule. <laughs> no, I, I trained before that. Oh, there yeah. you go. Yeah. 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 And good morning. America asked me to do one also for a fashion piece on, on running, you know, what marathon wear was. And so they called me into the office and like, yep, we want you to run a marathon in like a couple of weeks out in LA. You ready? And I'm like, huh, I haven't been doing very much. So I ran 
in a 407. Wow. Wow. 407 and had a mic pack on me and had to, I just, I think afterwards comment on different outfits. I was wearing body glove, which was fun. Mm, Yeah. Back in the day, that was a fun thing. And then I had to wake up the next morning at like four in the morning, drive to the ABC studios and do a live satellite feed uh, interview back in New York on covering the, what the piece was in the marathon. Wow. You, <laughs> that's impressive. And as I was driving, this was my time. So if people say, what's your favorite junk food? And I'll say chocolate chip cookies. So I had at four o'clock in the morning in after the marathon, you can eat what you want after a marathon. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I had a whole bag of chips, Ahoy cookies. Back then, and I ate them on the way to the studio. Mm. Oh my gosh. There, <laughs> that was your finish line, your reward. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. need a medal. You got a bag of chips, Ahoy. <laughs> oh, I got a medal too. <laughs> <laughs> while you're wearing the medal as you're eating the chips, Ahoy. <laughs> <laughs> to, to I was you. actually yeah. while I was driving. <laughs> Were you? <laughs> you earned it. You earned it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, what is next for you? Like, what what do you think? Is there anything that you haven't accomplished yet that you would like to? Um, at some point, well, I always want to do what God wants me to do, and so I pray for His wisdom and His revelation of what is my next step. And right now I'm supposed to be where I'm at. And, um, sometimes you look and you're like, really, are you sure God? Are you sure this is where I'm supposed to be like in the shipping department and I've got dust all over my nails are breaking. And, um, but yeah, that's, that's what I'm doing now. And there's a reason for it. We go through Mm -hmm. things to be strengthened and, and, um, toned, you know, we're exercising in our, in our walk with God. So I would love, and I claim an international ministry. And Mm. so at some point, I don't know how that will look, but, um, I still get fan mail from around the world. And, um, I think uh, there's TV shows and things running in other countries. So it's nice to know we've got people in Lithuania and Russia and all these different places that are Mm. writing you, um, fan mail. So That's so great. Yeah. So God has you right now in your own mission field, doing what you're doing. You know, maybe it's somebody, uh, I don't know, that's shipping that needs to hear the word or you, you know, somebody struggling with something. I mean, God places you where he needs you for a reason. So I'm sure you're going to have a huge impact where you are right now. And thank God that you are uh, courageous enough to share your faith because a lot of people now they don't want to, or they're afraid, Oh, I'm going to lose a job because of it. Um, so I just give you so much credit for just being open about your faith and and your love for Jesus and being able to share that with other people. Uh, so I think that's just wonderful. And some segues are like, even when they take God's name in vain, or they say, Holy poop. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And my comeback is that is not holy. Poop is not, crap is not holy. Yeah. So then they realize like, oh, like they, they, they're saying things without really knowing it, but it hurts my heart. So, um, that small little answer in a nice way, like if people say God's name in vain, I'm like, praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Cause I try and counter it. I don't like hearing it. Mm hmm. Um, you know, and it's little things like that that could make a difference in someone's life where nobody's probably ever told them that before. They've never heard about that or even thought about it. Um, so to be able to just do that, even if you think it's small, like, oh, I don't know, should I, does that make a difference? Maybe it did. So I love the fact that you are you're bold in your faith. And well, um, we're ambassadors, too. I think that we're ambassadors for him and how we represent him is very important. And mm-hmm. even when you think someone's not looking Um, I don't cheat behind the scenes. I don't um, lie because down the road that all comes back at you. And being a mother, um, you were, I was an example and it was the small things that I would do that my children would see and learn about. It wasn't me saying, now you remember that when you do this or this. No, it was by example. And so just practice doing being the best you can and working the hardest that you can at whatever it is just for him, no one else. uh, Even if no one sees it and no one gives you credit or glory or whatever it is, you're where you're supposed to be and you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. I love it. Great. That's beautiful. 
Well, it brings Thank God's you. peace. It brings his peace. And I think peace is very attractive to the world right now because many don't have it or they're they're fearful of some unknown, stupid little dumb bug that nobody can see or prove. Yeah. And um, it, to me, I, I'm just flabbergasted that they don't trust that God is more powerful than this little bug. Mm -hmm. I know. I'm with you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Faith is everything and trusting in God is everything. And, you know, people who believe they already know that, but it's the ones that don't where you're right. We have to be an example for them. Just like your nanny. You're like, whatever you have, I want that. Yeah. I want people to look at my life and say, wow, I, what does she have? What is that thing? Why is she always smiling? Why is she always happy? What is that about her? And then that opens the door and allows you to share the good news. Yes. Um, so you're right. It is so true. To, you know, we should all. What we should take away from this today is just to be an example, if you are a believer, to, you know, be an example of Christ and to be an ambassador for Christ and try to live your life in a way where people will look on and say, I want what they have. Yes. And uh, that's so powerful. So thank you for saying that. Thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Um I am just, again, you, you and I, we're going to be friends for a long time <laughs> and we're going to come up with some things to do. We'll be co-hosting a show before we know it. <laughs> oh, that'll be fun. Yeah. yeah. It'll be great. Side by side, instead of all these little windows that we have to look at each other at. I know it would be so nice to be in a studio with human beings and sitting across from people again, where somebody's doing our own, you know, lighting and sound and yeah. all of us just show up and get our makeup done and hair. And then we can <laughs> have our platform and talk about, you know, Jesus and whatever we want to do. So I'm looking yeah. forward to that. <laughs> it's yep. going to happen. Yeah. Yes. It's going to happen. Great. I want to go back to what Kim said, though. Uh, yep. It's so important for Christians to, to, to understand uh, that one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt not use the Lord's name in vain. That is deeper than a vocabulary word. Kim was absolutely right. That is ambassadorship. When we go out we represent Christ, whether we're being watched or not. And I thought that was absolutely incredible how you brought that up. It's so yeah. true. Mm -hmm. It's ambassadorship. We're ambassadors of our king. Right. I love it. Right. And how we conduct business and how you talk to the clerk when you're angry at, um, at the grocery store, whatever it is. Yep. You know, we shouldn't be angry. We shouldn't be. We should be gentle and kind and, mm -hmm. and forgiving. Yeah. yeah, and when, absolutely. when uh, Elisa, Lisa asked you the, the question, when did you peak? And you said, I, I haven't peaked yet. I watched <laughs> you and there was a glow on your face. And that is so true because you have not <laughs> peaked yet. And um, the humility that you showed, I, I, I'm obviously out of my league when it comes to supermodels, uh, other than my wife. Um, but I saw, she is beautiful, I've, by the way. I've had an opportunity to talk to you on camera, on Zoom a couple of times, and our conversations are not about supermodels. It's not about uh, anything other than dog walks and the beauty of God and rainbows and the cactus blooming and the humility and the love. It just, it, it just it radiates from you. It's real. And people okay. want real. Yeah. Inside people out. People do. People do want real, and it takes years and years of behind-the-scenes wilderness and struggle and um, uh, time alone. And I've had a lot of that. I stepped aside. Um, Lisa, you and I talked about me being on Dateline that one time. And yeah. I was a new Christian, and I had such a zeal for the Lord without uh, grace maybe behind it. And for some reason, they brought up um, something about being gay. And all a lot of my friends in New York that are in the business are gay. And I love them. They're wonderful. But they said, what is your opinion? And I said, and this is on Dateline Live TV. And I said, I don't, I'm not smart enough to have my own opinion on this. I go by what the Bible says. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know, it's an abomination before the Lord and hate the sin, love the sinner. And so it caused me to be ostracized in the business for years. Yeah. Um, and I had this, this quiet time for doing what was right. I just maybe didn't present it correctly, but um, it's hard when you're in the secular media and they propose a question to you that's normally point blank. And um, I answered it point blank and maybe I should have had more grace, but um because I do, I love all my gay friends. There, mm -hmm. there's some wonderful, wonderful people out there. Mm -hmm. They just, yeah. uh, to me, need to know 
Jesus. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, love wins every single time. If you have love in your heart, it's what you just said. I mean, you may not agree with the lifestyle or what it is, but you still love them and yeah. you accept them. And you just hope like, Hey, you, you know, I want you to know Jesus. And to the fact that they, that you were just um, ridiculed for that and treated very poorly. And uh, I, I just think it's terrible. Well, uh, it was, it was that learning ground by yeah. being pushed out of the business to have that alone time with him to learn and get that base. Yeah. Um, because it's not, it doesn't come easy. It comes from years and years and years of sitting at his feet or sitting at the cross and, um, and just learning that it's, it's all about him. It's not about us. Mm -hmm. And, and what a beautiful place to be, to just be at the feet of Jesus and just learning and spending that one-on-one -on -one time with God, uh, whether it's, you know, your devotions, prayer, just being in nature, there is no better place in the world that you could be than in his presence. And when you so, seek him first, everything yeah. else follows. Yeah. You have to seek him first. And so that's, I was going to start studying again, nutrition and, um, and how to make um, soaps and natural hair care and all these things. And I heard God say, seek me first. And I'm like, okay, I'll do a Bible study instead. <laughs> 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 hey, you're listening. So I, sometimes yeah. that's what he does. He's like, I just want to know, do I have your attention? And are you listening to me? And once he knows that no matter what, he always has your attention, then he'll move you on to the other thing. So hold that thought with the soap and the hair stuff. Cause I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah. But oh, well, I think you're Kim, it has just been such a pleasure talking to you. Oh my gosh. I just we we need to have you back again. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> sure. I think your answer though to that question, uh, I had a mentor uh that was a pastor. He he had a they were they set him up on ABC News to try to come after him on uh that type of lifestyle too. And the Holy Spirit took over for his answer, and his answer was similar to what you said. He said, that's the word of God. It's, I don't have an opinion. God didn't ask me what my opinion. That is his word, and I'm called to be obedient to his word. Yes. If you don't like it, take it up with him. Yes. Yeah. And I, yeah. Th that actually is the, the perfect answer. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Yeah. We're, not, answer, we're not called to give our editorial on what God wrote. He wrote, and it's real, it's today. As you said earlier, he's, he's, he's supernatural today. As, we are, as you were starting to talk about your walk about in the Lord, I saw a red cardinal just fly right by into that bush, and the, the beauty of him and just showing his signs is incredible. Yeah. His signs are everywhere. Yeah, they're everywhere. <laughs> yes. We just have to wake up and see it. Yes. Yeah, that's the thing. And you give know, him credit. And give him credit. You know, everyone will look at something like, well, that's just such and such. No! Who made that? Yep. <laughs> Who's yeah. in charge? Yep. Exactly. Yep. I think if people could take their faces out of their phones and their computers and whatever else they're doing and just take an hour a day to just go out into nature, look around and just be in the presence of God and all of his beauty and uh, it'll be life changing. And it's attitude also. Like I don't yes. look, oh, I have to walk the dog again. Oh my gosh. Why do I just have to walk the dog? No. I'm lucky I have a dog. I'm lucky I get to go out and look at nature and sing. I sing God songs to him and use that time yeah. with my dog to just glorify God. Mm -hmm. I love it. Just gratitude of everything. I mean, the fact that you can get up and walk out your door, that you have a home to walk out of, that yes. you have enough, you know, you can afford to have a dog. I mean, all these little things in life that people take for granted. Yeah. And if you just sit back and be grateful for everything that you have and are given um you know yeah it's there's a lot with attitude and also yeah. intention and we're going through construction and redesign in our house and so there's dust all the time dust and so i'll come home from nine days of uh, nine hours of working and have to mop the floor before i make dinner and so i'm like thank you lord that i have this house thank you lord for my new floors thank you lord for 
cleaning products that I love, you know, natural <laughs> smelling cleaning products. I get tickled at the smallest little thing. <laughs> yeah, but that does, it makes all the difference though, to have a positive attitude and it takes like no energy at all to be happy. It's so much more draining if you're sad or you're mad or you're angry. It's like you, I, if people just understood how simple it is to Think positive, make the best of every situation. And is every situation good? No, there's terrible things happening in the world. There's yeah. tragedy happening in the world. People yeah. are sick, but find the goodness in everything because there is something good. And take every thought captive. So I will start running down the wrong hole sometimes. And I'm like, nope, I'm going to turn from that. And I'm going to choose to focus on what's good and what's God. Yeah, mm -hmm. love it. Oh, <laughs> this is so great. <laughs> I hope everyone enjoyed this today. And uh, if you want to learn more about Kim, go to kimalexis.com. Uh, and uh, Kim, I'm just so excited to see what's next w when you finally peak. What is that going to be? And what's it going to look like? We're excited to, to be watching and we're cheering you on and praying for you. And uh, this is, it's going to be wonderful. Yay. So. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me on. It's been a Thank blessing. You and you're talking about international. This 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 ministry goes literally to every country of the world. So every country in the world will be able to see this message in. And, and we want to we want to see this this message of hope of Christ that um, it like you said, it's inside out. And um, it, there's a glow to you. And that it, it's not the beauty of the supermodel, it's the beauty of our Savior Jesus Christ. Yeah. And just as that, the light came on again. <laughs> well, it's my other computer and it's giving this little light. And so if it goes into its safety mode, it like makes a dark shadow. <laughs> but that's God's timing because the light so came on exactly the time I said that. Right yeah, I got to jiggle the mouse to get better side light there. <laughs> <laughs> when we watch that later, you're going to see it's probably like a big ray of light with, you know. It was. <laughs> yeah, it was God's awesome. glory. Yep. Yeah, radiated. it is. Yep, I can't literally. wait to watch. Yep. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, okay. you've got some work to do, Kim. So we will let you go. Thank you for spending the morning with us. And uh, we are very excited to see what happens next. Yes. The best is yet to come for all of us. It is, the best is yet to come. <laughs> yes. yes. God okay. bless you. Thank you. All Thanks, right. Kim. God bless Great. you. Bye. Bye. Wow. What okay. A, what so now do we, what a great our, interview, huh? Yes. Um, she's amazing. Yep. And I've had some really great conversations with her, um, you know, before we started this interview too. And she's just such a lovely person from the inside out. I mean, she's yep. obviously beautiful, but oh, her inner beauty is just, she's stunning. Yep. Um, and just what she's done in her walk and her faith, and she truly wants to help others. And she's just done so much in her life. And I love the fact that she says, I haven't peaked yet. So I know, I'm really I know. And literally the light came on her when I said that. It was a, it was, I, it was a God thing. <laughs> I can't wait. To and then she it. started talking about her faith and the literally the cardinal flew. And that's why my eyes went, the cardinal flew right into that, 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 that uh, push right next to us. We were just talking earlier today too about you know signs. Like yep. God gives us signs for so many things, and if it's a if it's a rainbow, if it's a cardinal, if it's a light burst, um, you know that's God. Whatever that means, and whatever we figure out, you know the that is supposed to be telling us, um, you know that's between us and God or you and God, mm -hmm. but uh, he does, he is here. He is present in our lives and he will give us signs and he will speak to us in so many different ways through so many different things, but we just have to take the time to listen and give him our time and attention. And he's there. Yep. He's always there. Yep. So that wraps up the, another great his story. We have great guests coming in the future. Uh, so it's an exciting time. And as we said, uh, this is going to be going on radio. Uh, in South Carolina uh, starting in May. So it will, yeah. the radio audience will pick this up and radio internet that will reach the United, all of the United States. So uh, his story is getting out there uh, a lot. Amazing. It's amazing. Well, his story needs to be out there because everybody's got one. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs>